Hello guys and welcome back to the channel. So in this video, I wanted to give you a space news update, something I've never done, but there's just so much that has happened in the space industry in the last few days that I just feel like I have to make a video. So there is a bunch of new vehicles being tested. Uh, Firefly got a new contract. Uh, Rocket Lab is um, aiming for 2 billion in backlog. And I feel that this has really gone under the radar. So I want to pay special attention to that one uh, towards the end of the video. Uh, so it's a new unique video. Please make sure uh, hit the subscribe button and let me know what you think if I should do more of these videos and before we go I just want to give special thanks to the channel members. We have 11 channel members now uh, It the, the numbers are growing up going up crazy fast and we have like three or four patreons also so you guys really support the channel and uh, Really make me be able to more research and keep my enthusiasm up. So big. Thank you now Let's go over the news. So the long delayed, I tried to do this in uh, time order. And again, so much has happened. I'm sure I'm going to uh, be missing some stuff, but the one of the most important ones uh, I want to pick out and, and go over. So one of them is um, this one. So um, the Starliner finally much, much delayed and over budget program has launched uh, two days ago. Um, and they today, I just, as I was shooting the video, I saw the videos coming out that they docked with uh, the International Space Station. Uh, there was extra delays because they found a helium leak um, amongst other problems, but then they deemed that despite the helium leak, the, the vehicle was still safe to fly. I'm not sure if I was one of the astronauts on this program, if I would have dared to go on this experimental vehicle with known issues. Uh, but I guess the helium is a non-flammable, very um, stable gas that doesn't really react with anything. So they deemed that it was okay. So I'm happy that they arrived safe. Uh, to the International Space Station, and this was a success. Now, the next one, which is very interesting and has implications to uh, Rocket Lab, Firefly Aerospace announces a multi-launch agreement with Lockheed Martin for 25 Alpha launches. So, a little bit of a background. So, Firefly is one of a potential competitors to Rocket Lab. The reason why I say potential is because um, they don't really have stable cadence, I believe they have had four flights and none of them was a total success. Three of them was a total failure. And one of them, uh, I believe the last burn on stage two, uh, didn't make it so that, uh, what they were launching ended up in the correct orbit. Um, I might be off on the numbers a little bit on, on, on this one, but the point is that the, the vehicle is not yet proven and reliable. Um, and there was news that they are considering being sold for $1.5 billion to an unknown customer. We were suspecting that that is Lockheed Martin. And the reason why that was curious is because, um, it's not that they got a, an offer to be acquired. They were considering selling themselves to someone else. And I think that that you do when, you know, you're running out of money and, uh, again, this, this, you know, Astra went out of business, uh, Virgin Galactic, uh, went out of business, uh, and you know, th these guys seem to be struggling. So these were all sort of good news for rocket lab, um, because there was no other companies, you know, underbidding, uh, their, their contracts. So this is a little bit of background for this. Um, so the title already is a little bit misleading uh, because this is actually an agreement to launch 15 launches with uh, with an option to launch uh, 10 more. And this is all the way up through to uh, 2019, 2029. It's a little bit late when I'm recording this. So that is 15 launches in five years. And that is three per year launches. Now, I don't know how much uh, they charge for the launch. Um, 
but this doesn't make any company viable. I mean, we know Rocket Lab and their numbers and we are approaching 20 launches uh, this week and this week, this year. Uh, very needed to, you know, get their numbers and, and gross margin up. So I think the three launches is a really good proof of concept that, that you know, there is a customer, there is demand, uh, but it's not going to make them a viable business. And Firefly is also a company that is delivering or uh, developing on-orbit services, you know, uh, lunar, um, they have a lunar lander, lander, I don't know why I can't say this word, that, that they're developing and they have little money in the bank. So um, I'm not sure that it's the best business practice to be doing so many things uh, all at once, but this is uh, what they are doing. Um, as for Rocket Lab, I do believe that they are slightly in a different market because as you can see, uh, their rocket is a lightweight carbon composite um, with patented prop propulsion technologies. Um, it provides low cost launch services for satellites up to 1030 kilograms. So uh, Electron goes a little bit over 300 kilograms that it can lift to low earth orbit and this rocket can do three times uh, that much. So I believe that if you have a satellite uh, that is a little bit heavier than 300, um, but it's still not a constellation and you need your own rocket, then this is pretty much your only choice. Peter Beck said that Electron, I believe, fits 80 or 90% of the market. So I guess that they're niching into this 10% uh, that uh, Rocket Lab doesn't cover. Uh, so I don't really think that this will be taking um, away contracts from Rocket Lab because uh, if you have a satellite that you need a dedicated launch to that is let's say 500 or 600 kilogram, it would not work on Electron and Neutron, which will be able to lift 17,000 kilograms is again just too big. Uh, so then you're really in between those two rockets. So I don't think that they are very much competing with uh, Rocket Lab and they are many, many, many years behind. And to be honest, I think that they have and going to have financing issues and so forth and so forth. So that's what I know about this one. So next news, we had an amazing, a freaking amazing uh, test flight of um, the fourth iteration of Starship. I don't know if... So excitedly, there is... Uh, there was this flap that was... Oh, let me turn off the sound on this one. So there was... Okay, I wanted to live stream this thing, okay? And I really hope that I could do it, but I had six kids at my house. I, I wrote that in this tweet and somebody thought that I had six kids. No, I had six kids in the house. Uh, I have three kids, one on the way. Uh, this one is the smallest one. And the bigger ones, they had friends over and I was babysitting and there was a lot of noise everywhere. And this is how I ended up uh, watching it. The main excitement of the show was that uh, on re-entry Starship. I don't know, comment below if you watched it. I'm, I'm curious if, if how many of you are watching this um, who also watched uh, the flight. So uh, what you can see here is basically the plasma that is forming around this flap and somehow it was eating itself through this opening of the flap and it started eating uh, through uh, the flap and then it looked like it was going to completely disintegrate and then if that would have happened uh, this is the one that is like controlling how Starship is falling and it would have meant that the rocket was going to blow up and at one point uh, in, in the broadcast you know we got this black screen and it said awaiting acquisition of signal and that's how it ended last time when the rocket blew up there is no more signal right so I was basically sure that it blew up and then you know the broadcast came back and the rocket miraculously managed to land. And I love the internet, the memes that came out of this one. So I just want to show you a few one if, if you like a good laughter. 
uh, that little flap was such a hero today. It's time to go. Was I a good flap? No, you were the best flap. Here's the next one. The engineer who designed that flap. <laughs> I mean, really, when you were watching it and you saw that it was like burning up, you're like, oh, my God, there's seconds left. And it made it. I don't understand how. Acquisition of signal from Starship. I lived, bitch. <laughs> Again, this is referencing this time when, you know, I thought the rocket blew up and it came back and it was really, really beaten up. Here's the next one. The Starship flap was like, yeah, the Terminator. And here's the next one. Even Elon Musk uh, commented on this one. This sums up the final five minutes of the, of the flight test this morning. SpaceX employees and viewers. Wah! Starship. Wah! The one flap. <laughs> so this is just some of the memes. The memes were amazing. So huge congratulations to uh, the SpaceX team. Elon Musk tweeted that they're going to try to catch uh, the next one with the Mechazilla because this one went uh, so well. That's going to be crazy to, to see that one. So uh, I'm, I was really blown away today by you know how fast SpaceX is going. And um, I really wish we could invest in SpaceX. Uh, there's two barriers. One of them is that it's not a public company. And the second barrier is the valuation is just crazy on this company. Um, I'm not sure that if they were a public company today, I would dare to invest with the current valuation that they have. So, And I am really curious how they have the money to be launching these ships because the, these ships are not cheap. And this was the fourth launch without any customer. Um, so that means that they're just expanding the rocket and blowing them up and seeing what happens. And let's say that the cost of this is a hundred million dollars. Okay. So they just blew $400 million on four tests. And the next one is also going to be, as far as I understand, an expandable without the customer um, test flight. So they are really, really well financed. That's, that's all I can say. And now we came to the most important ones. So I put up a video uh, on the channel, which was basically rebroadcasting uh, an investor event uh, when uh, Adam Spice spoke about uh, spoke at the Typhoon Stifle uh, Cross Sector Insight uh, Conference, and I really recommend that you watch this if if you haven't seen it. I'm just going to show a very slight clip uh, where he talks about that they're going for two billion in backlog already this year. And I want to talk about what this means, what we can expect. Uh, so here we go. So really the model here is to continue building the backlog with those, you know, those meaty kind of big contracts because we moved from, you know, we, before we got MDA Global Star, we had some smaller contracts where we were building kind of one-off or maybe onesie twosies for, uh, for NASA and other customers. And then we basically got our first small constellation order for, for a, a company called Varda Space that was doing in-space uh, pharmaceutical manufacturing. And then we transitioned that up to our first major constellation, which was the MDA Global Star, which was, like you said, 143 million. And we followed up with more than three and a half times bigger with, global, with the, uh, the SDA contract. And we're continuing to put our, you know, our, our oars in the water on, on similarly sized or larger program opportunities. So the goal is to continue building that backlog. And we've been successful in, in more than doubling our backlog year here for the last several years. So I think our goal would, would be, you know, the same as, you know, try to try to double backlog if we can, you know, in, in you know, uh, 2024 over 2023 and, you know, continue that momentum. And as you do that, especially with these larger, um, these, these larger programs, that really starts to de-risk your out your revenue forecast, even, you know, two, three years out, right? Which is. So that's right. He said it Two two million in backlog uh, from 2023 to 2024. Uh, that is crazy. We are at 1 billion currently and we're in June. So the, the only way that this is possible is that they get awarded major contracts. It's not going to come from, uh, you know, like, ah, oh, here's the 30 million award for the Victus Hayes, I believe. Uh, so it's completely unrealistic that they're going to sell like 30, 33 of those. Cause I believe it was like 32 million to, to add, um, another billion to the contract. So 
I'm quite convinced that there is one or two more contracts coming that is the size of the SDA contract, and they're going to be announced in the next six months. Uh, one of them is maybe that we're going to see uh, the neutron hot fire test. Uh, and then right after that, or closely after that, they're going to announce a huge multi-launch uh, neutron contract. Maybe that's uh, a four or six launch contract, 50 million a launch, that would be two to 300 million. So that's on the neutron side. But I believe that there is other constellations um, that they will probably be awarded that is going to be in the five, six, 700 million range. And that is just fantastic for the stock. But, so now we have the expectations very high. As a Palantir shareholder who has been in the stock since the stock is eight, uh, my, my average on the stock is $8. Um, Palantir is also very, very reliant on government contracts. And I can tell you that these government contracts, they're very, very lumpy. Uh, they sometimes take a lot longer uh, than you anticipated. So it could be that, yes, the goal is 2 billion and it's very real because, you know, they, they were bidding on the right projects. Uh, but then for some reason, the government takes a bit longer and the contracts only get announced in 2025 and they miss this. So should we get really worried if the backlog is $1.3 billion dollars meaning only 30% bigger at the end of 2024. And my answer to that is no, this can, this is totally normal when it comes to government contracts. The only thing uh, that is important is that we should know that, you know, these contracts are on the way and they're bidding on these contracts and the possibility of, you know, Rocket Lab getting them is, is on the horizon, right? Yeah. So, I don't know about you, but there's just a lot of freaking catalysts out there for Rocket Lab right now. Uh, the stock is very, very undervalued in, in, in my opinion, but you know, we, we can argue on that. Um, you know, Scott is, has a different view, but he's also not saying the stock is overvalued, but there's so much catalyst right now. There is soon the, Archimedes hot fire test. It should come at any moment now that we that we see that. Uh, after that, there is potential neutron contract announcements. Uh, we are waiting for the backlog to go to two billion, and that can only come through more contract announcements. And the EU and Canada decreased interest rates. The Fed is expected to start lowering interest rates. That is going to be hugely beneficial for small cap stocks. And yeah, so I don't know about you, but that's a lot, a lot of catalysts. So um, yeah, if you were, okay, not, not financial advice. So if I was to be buying uh, or planning to add to my Rocket Lab position, I would really hurry up because not sure how long this window of cheap Rocket Lab shares is going to be open. But that's what I would do. Again, not financial advice. So thank you so much for watching the video. Please let me know what you thought. This is a little bit of a different format. Uh, never done such a video. And uh, please make sure that you're subscribed. And if you want to support the channel, free, feel free to join the channel membership or become a Patreon member. And yeah, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video. Ciao, ciao.